Welcome to Campfire Case Files. Today, we will talk about an interesting criminal case where the accused was acquitted despite admitting that he killed the victim. United States vs. Achong, Philippines, 1908. Achong and Pascual Gualberto were living in the same house and slept in the same room. Achong was employed as a cook while Pascual was employed as a houseboy. The door of the room they occupied did not have a bolt or lock. As a measure of security, the occupants attached a small hook on the inside of the door and reinforced this means of closing the door by placing a chair against it. On the night of August 14 of that year, Achong was already asleep. He had a knife under his pillow to protect himself against would-be robbers. There had been several robberies in the area prior to this date. In fact, one of these robberies took place in the house where A Chong worked as a cook. A Chong began arming himself with a knife at night because of these repeated robberies. Pascual left early that evening to go on a walk with his two friends, Celestino and Mariano. Several hours after Pascual left, A Chong woke up because he heard sounds coming from the door as if someone was trying to forcefully open it. The room was very dark. Achong called out, who's there, twice, but no one answered. At this point, Achong was convinced that an intruder was forcing his way into the room. He shouted, If you enter the room, I will kill you, thinking that the person outside was a robber or a thief who might harm him. Suddenly, the door opened and Achong felt something hit him. Fearing for his life and believing that the stranger had successfully opened the door and began attacking him, A Chong pulled the knife from under his pillow and struck out wildly at the intruder. That other person ran out of the room and fell on the steps, fatally wounded. A Chong followed him and, in the moonlight, recognized that the person he attacked with the knife was his roommate, Pascual. It turned out that when Pascual returned, and for reasons known only to him, he decided to forcefully open the door and refused to say who he was. According to the Supreme Court, there is no reasonable explanation as to Pascual's conduct. Other than that, in the spirit of mischief, he played a trick on his roommate and sought to frighten him by forcing his way into the room and refusing to give his name to make Achong believe that he was being attacked by a robber. The Supreme Court believed it was probable that when the door opened, the chair that was propped against it was pushed back and hit Achong. This caused Achong to believe that he was being attacked, causing him to strike the intruder with a knife. The Supreme Court also considered two other factors. First, Achong and Pascual were on good and friendly terms so there was no apparent reason for Achong to intentionally kill his roommate. And, second, the two had an understanding that when either of them returns at night, he should knock and inform the other of his identity. When Achong realized it was his roommate, he called out for help and admitted that he was the one who stabbed the victim, saying he did so under the impression that Pascual was a robber because he forcefully opened the door despite Achong's warnings. Achong was arrested. Pascual was brought to the hospital, but he died the following day. Achong was charged with the crime of assassination. The trial court found him guilty of simple homicide. During the trial, the defendant admitted that he killed Pascual, but he did so without any intent to do a wrongful act, and that he was merely exercising his lawful right of self-defense. The defendant appealed his conviction before the Philippine Supreme Court. The Supreme Court decided in favor of the defendant. According to the court, there would be no doubt that A Chong would be completely exempted from criminal liability if the person who forced open the door had been, in fact, a thief, as the defendant believed him to be. Clearly, A Chong would have the right to resist and repel such intrusion and the thief having forced open the door despite Achong's warnings to desist and his threat that he would kill the intruder if he persisted in his attempt in the darkness of the night in a small room 
with no means of escape, with the intruder advancing upon him despite his warnings, Achong would have been wholly justified in using any weapon available to him. However, the evidence shows that the intruder was not a thief and that there was no actual threat against Achong, any of his property, or the property under his charge when he struck the fatal blow. There was no real unlawful aggression on the part of the intruder, and there was no real necessity for the use of the knife. The question to be answered then was whether one can be held criminally responsible if, by reason of a mistake as to the facts, he does an act for which he would be exempted from criminal liability if the facts were as he supposed them to be, but which would constitute homicide if the actor knew the true state of facts. The Supreme Court said that in this situation, there would be no criminal liability if the alleged ignorance or mistake of fact was not due to negligence or bad faith. A Chong struck the fatal blow in the firm belief that the intruder was a thief from whose assault he was in imminent peril. His life, his property, and the property committed to his charge. In view of all the circumstances, as they presented themselves to the defendant at the time, he acted in good faith, without malice or criminal intent, believing that he was merely exercising his legitimate right of self-defense. Had the facts been as he believed them to be, he would have been wholly exempt from criminal liability, and that he was not guilty of negligence or recklessness or even carelessness in falling into his mistake as to the facts, or in the means he adopted to defend himself from the danger which he believed threatened his person, his property, and the property under his charge. The Supreme Court did not explain why Achong was not negligent or reckless. However, the facts of the case clearly support the decision of the Supreme Court. Again, it was in the middle of the night. The entire room was dark. Ah Chung woke up to the sound of someone forcing the door open. He called out and asked who the person was, but he did not hear an answer. He warned that he would kill the person if he would enter the room, but the intruder persisted in opening the door, and he had an agreement with his roommate that they would knock and announce their identity if they would come home at night. So Ah Chong did not think it was his roommate. And during those intense moments, Ah Chong did not touch his knife. It was only after the door blasted open and something hit him. Only then did Ah Chong pull the knife from under his pillow. Ah Chong's acts of asking who the intruder was and warning him of getting killed if he would enter the room show that Ah Chong was not negligent or reckless. The judgment of conviction was reversed, and the defendant was acquitted. That is the end of today's story. What do you think about this case? Let me know in the comment section. The link to the Philippine Supreme Court decision I used as reference is in the description. To hear more real-life stories based on actual court cases, hit like and subscribe. See you in my next video.